uh, Kevin Cavanaugh. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. To echo some of those concerns, I don't think it is ethical to design any sort of study where you have a control group that isn't waitlisted, that's on dialysis. How can you do that? You're asking for study and data, which wouldn't be ethical to do, and something which just goes hand in hand, that waitlisting is absolutely required for transplantation. So I think that the lack of evidence is to trigger an exception. I don't feel that that's a valid reason for disapproval. There was also on the handout some question on whether or not it fills a gap, and I certainly think it fills a huge gap. There's not a metric similar to this, and this is a very important gap because transplantation will double the life expectancy of someone on dialysis. And so when you talk about patient choice, I think a properly educated patient, it would be in the vast minority of patients that would not choose a transplant. The other concern I have is the classification of this as just a process measure. We've seen a number of calls for risk adjustment, a number of exclusion criteria. Those are usually associated with outcome measures. And I think that this metric will have the benefit of possibly even increasing the health status of dialysis patients so they can be waitlisted. For example, last meeting it was talked about how that there's an increased risk of renal cell carcinoma in patients that are undergoing dialysis. Now the incidence is still, from my reading, approximately 1% or below uh, a yearly incidence, but it's still an uh, increased risk. However, stage 1 and stage 2 renal cell carcinoma patients can still be waitlisted. So I would put forward that this type of a metric would encourage more early diagnosis of those patients. It may encourage patients to get drug treatment or to have that provided by them. So I think overall, it will increase the health of patients, and I think that this should be viewed as a outcome metric rather than just a run-of-the-mill process metric. And the validity to me, I fail to grasp that. You know, I've tried to do some reading and studying on this, and from what I can see, when you have something that doubles the life expectancy of a patient, it's hard to put forward the argument that this isn't a valid type of measurement, that of being waitlisted. And you have such a high variability between these centers, between 0 to 75 percent of patients that are waitlisted by uh, centers in Georgia, for example. And the interquartal range is between 16.7 to 33.3 percent, a doubling, a, a difference. So this is a metric that is very much needed. It will save lives. And you can even calculate, you know, if there was a 1% increase in transplantation, you will have a significant savings of lives. To my calculations, and looking at our six-month delay is equal to approximately 70-some lives. And so I really would encourage this metric to go forward. I didn't hear any specifics by the committee other than reiterating their previous position. And I think the harms of this measure is extremely low. Being referred or put on a wait list does not mean you're going to get a transplant, but it does mean that your health is going to be up to a point that it can be because there are some exclusionary criteria, but most of that is reversible disease. So this is a outcome metric, and those type of variables should be constant between dialysis centers. Dialysis centers on a whole do a pretty homogeneous type of population between one and another, and so that I don't see how you reach a variability between facilities or a bias between facilities on approval of this metric. So my mind on this is has not been changed by uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Kevin Cavanaugh again. Thank you, Tom. A little added thought. When I stated on the variability, that was actually variability of dialysis center referrals. Because if you're not referred, you're not going to be waitlisted. And I think the comment on 
you have to have a certain health to be waitlisted, again, makes this a outcome measure. And it puts pressure on the dialysis centers and the doctors to get these patients in the best health that they can. So that this is really an outcome measure. The referral measure that you're talking about would just be a process measure. And I think that would be a, a inferior measure. Right now, the referrals, it, this is, would be the state of Georgia, vary between 0% to 75% between dialysis centers. And the big question goes into is whether or not there is optimal patient education regarding choices and requests for referral. And again, that's what the news investigative reports have centered around. So I think that by getting two measures and turning it into a process measure as opposed to an outcome measure really is not going to be good for a patient. For example, it wouldn't encourage early diagnosis of renal carcinoma. It wouldn't encourage weight loss. It wouldn't encourage any of these things. This type of measure will encourage getting the patient in good health because certainly diagnosing cancer early, getting patients proper weight, getting them healthy, getting them off of drugs, those are things that we should be encouraging by measures. That's what will move the needle. This measure is good because it's all encompassing and it's looking at actually an outcome of health in order to get on that wait list. Thank you.